We all know that proper nutrition is important to a child's development, but as we get older, many of us assume that it really doesn't matter much anymore. Nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, many doctors are beginning to see signs of dehydration and malnutrition in older people who otherwise lead normal lives. I'm Ellen Urshino. In just a moment on tonight's edition of AgeWise Weekly, you'll find out exactly what you need to eat to live a longer, healthier life. We're talking tonight about one of my favorite subjects, food. Seriously, nutrition as a science is poorly taught in most medical schools. As a result, a lot of us are left at the mercy of self-appointed experts. Well, tonight we have no self-appointed expert. We have a real expert with a ton of credentials. Her name is Mim Seidel, and Mim is a nutritionist. Well, actually, you have a big, long title. You tell me. What, I know you're with the county, and you're a nutritionist. And you are? I'm the Public Health Nutrition Administrator with the okay. Allegheny County Health Department, and I'm a registered dietitian. Well, welcome. And my first question is, how do our nutritional needs change as we get older? Well, they do change. Exactly how they change, we're still investigating. But we do know that most people need less calories. That doesn't mean they need less good food, but they need less calories than they did when they were younger they still need at least the same amount of vitamins and minerals that they used to need. Ma'am, are you finding that a lot of older people are not getting the nutrients they should be that getting? Seems, that seems to be the indication. Um, we, we all know people who don't eat well, and there also have been studies that show that as people enter the hospital, um, in some studies, 40 to 60 percent of those people entering the hospital were malnourished by some criteria. Okay, I, I've heard it said that, that our taste buds change over the years. They seem to, we seem to taste less. We don't have as good a taste. For smokers especially, mm -hmm. their, their taste really goes downhill. Um, but as we get older, yes, taste changes. You don't taste things, so things don't taste good. Okay, I hear a lot of older people say, I just don't get hungry like I used to. Why is that? That's a good question. It could be because they're active, uh, not active, also because they may be depressed or lonely. Right. You know, you're used to eating with a group of people and they're not there. Then there's what I call the, the tea and toast set. Now, you're not old enough to be in that category, but I am, and I call my mom and I say, Mom, what did you have for dinner last night? Well, dear, I, I really wasn't hungry, and I just had a little tea and toast. And that's where you fall into a very serious problem, right? That's right, because tea and toast does not give you anywhere near the nutrients that you need, even though you're older. What role does nutrition play in warding off some of the, the, the more serious illnesses that afflict older people? Okay, well, first of all, if somebody's well-nourished beforehand, mm -hmm. uh, when they're a little bit younger, they may ward off, ward off or delay diabetes, heart disease, some of the cancers, but also, or enough calcium, they can not get osteoporosis, right. but also if you're well-nourished when you're older and then you get ill and you go to the hospital, studies have shown that you recover quicker if you were well-nourished to begin with, or if you need surgery, you'll recover much quicker if you were well-nourished before you got there. And there's lots of studies that show that. We had a nutritionist, uh, a dietitian, uh, on the program a while back, and she talked about the serious problem of a lot of older people not getting enough fluids and dehydration yes. being something that, 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 that older people don't think about because, again, they don't get thirsty. They don't get thirsty. Just like the taste diminishes, mm -hmm. the sense of thirst diminishes. So people cannot rely on the sense of thirst, and they need to have at least those proverbial eight glasses of water a day. That could be juice and milk could make up some of that, but tea and coffee should not make that up because those are diuretics. They make you uh -huh. lose water. Okay. So by saying I have eight glasses of tea and coffee, that doesn't help. Okay, certain health problems do require some restrictions in our diet. If, if you're diabetic, uh, simple sugars have to be eliminated. If you have high blood pressure, salt has to be eliminated. What about supplements? What about vitamins? Do, do older people really need vitamin supplements? 
I don't have a problem with people taking a vitamin, a multi-mineral, multivitamin supplement that's 100% of the RDA. That's shown on the label, and it'll say 100%. As insurance, let me point out that it does not replace food. There are factors in food that we don't know about, but they're very important, and because we don't, haven't identified them, we can't put them in supplements. Mm -hmm. But if somebody wants to take a supplement, there may be a good reason for it. You know, with illnesses and with certain medications that people get, mm -hmm. sometimes even though they eat well, their vitamin needs could be a little higher, and a supplement would be fine, but not one of these mega, mega doses. People get into trouble with those. I always like to talk to the experts and see what they do. Do you take vitamins? Yes, I do. Um, vitamin I, C? I take some vitamin C because I have a lot of allergies. And vitamin C, the kind that make you sniffle. Mm -hmm. And vitamin C, though, it has not been shown to prevent colds. It decreases the symptoms of sniffles. It dries you up. Right, I've found that in the wintertime, especially if I know I'm getting a cold and I, I increase my, my vitamin C dosage, the cold isn't as severe. It doesn't go away, but it doesn't get as bad. It doesn't get worse. That's right. And wouldn't you rather take that than, let's say, an antihistamine or something that's going to make you fall asleep? What do you call a, a good dose of vitamin C? Well, the RDA is 60 milligrams a day. People take 500 or 1,000 milligrams a day, and that's not dangerous. No, because what your body doesn't use, it gets rid of. It excretes with some vitamins on the way to it being excreted, it can mm -hmm. do damage. Is it true that older people need more protein in their diet? Slightly more. They need a little bit more. Um, but most Americans get way too much anyway. So I don't want people to suddenly start increasing their protein intake when they've already been eating an eight ounce steak every day anyway. But they do need a little bit more, yes. A lot of people out there are thinking about becoming a vegetarian. It's, it's very trendy, mm -hmm. it's very popular. Um, Good idea for someone in their 50s, 60s, 70s and beyond? If they're interested and they know what they're doing, that's fine. And by that I mean you don't say, oh, I'll have the mashed potatoes and peas and I'll leave the steak mm -hmm. off the plate. Mm -hmm. When we get rid of the meat products, we have to put in beans and grains. And some people will still use milk and egg products and cheese, and that's you know, fine. That's a, that's a lacto-vegetarian, lacto right? Okay. They mm -hmm. take uh, all of the dairy products. They will eat... Uh, a me, uh, they'll eat uh, milk, I can't think of the dairy products, milk and cheese, cheese yogurt. and mm -hmm. yogurt and things like that. Right. The strict there vegetarian eats nothing but grains and beans and, and, fruits, beans and, vegetables. and fruits and vegetables. That's, that's difficult to do, but it's okay, it, okay. as long as you do it right. Then there's the semi-vegetarian, and I, I know a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are the ones that eat fish and poultry, but no red meat. And that's also healthy. Obviously, all the protein will come in. But if the person is eating fried fish and fried chicken and saying, hey, I'm a semi-vegetarian and I'm doing better, that doesn't make any sense. Ma'am, what about people who are concerned about their nutrition, that if they're not getting the proper nutrients, that they may have a diet that is deficient in something? Where can you go to get advice? I mean, not everybody has Mim Seidel sitting to their left. Where can you go to get some good information that somebody could track, somebody could, uh, could really analyze your eating habits? Every hospital in Allegheny County, the 24 acute care hospitals that I surveyed recently, all have outpatient dietitians. And people can call, ask for the outpatient dietitian, and set up an appointment. They may not, their insurance probably will not pay for something so mm -hmm. purely informational mm -hmm. like that, but it doesn't cost that much money. Do you have any, any service at the, at the county level where somebody can call and just ask a question? Or um, I'm sure you have a lot of good literature. We do have a lot of good literature. We have about 130 different pamphlets that are very um, practical pamphlets. Mm -hmm. And by calling the health department's number 687-ACHD for Allegheny County Health Department, um, you can order the pamphlets for free. Okay, that's, uh, that's an easy number too, 687 ACHD, Allegheny County Health Department. I think the important thing to remember is that there is information out there. And, Mim, I know that a lot of people uh, probably don't do this, but it's probably a good idea before you uh, want to arrange for a consultation to keep a diary of what you eat. You may be amazed if you write down everything you eat. 
That is very helpful. I've done that in yes. my life, and, and I mean, I thought, oh my heavens, I didn't. When you start counting those crackers and those cookies, and you have to write down, oh no, I, I not, not 36 crackers. <laughs> and, I mean, it's just amazing how much food we can consume. That's especially good for people who say, I don't eat a thing and I can't lose right. anything. <laughs> right, right. No, I always say those are the people that say, if I eat it standing up, it doesn't count. If I eat it standing at the kitchen sink, no calories. It's only when I sit down. Okay, we're talking talking about nutrition, uh, the kind of nutrition you need to stay healthy longer and uh, the kind of nutrients we need as we grow older. Our phone number is 683-1600. We're going to take a break and we're going to be back and we're going to talk about cholesterol and fat and anything else you want to talk about. Six when pillars of Perry Mason in rhyme. the case of the shoplifter's so shoe. One. Perry takes on poor Aunt Sarah, accused of murder and theft. Two, even Perry has to think she looks really guilty, and a witness doesn't help. That's her, the defendant. Three, out the door, Perry stops. There it is, that knowing look. Four, Perry moves in for the kill. It's Leonard Nimoy. Watch out for the Vulcan death grip. Five, the confession. I didn't do it. It wasn't me. It was the old lady, the kid, one of them. Okay, no confession, but it's L.A. They'll beat it out of him. And six, back to the office for the wrap-up. The cases change, but the six pillars of Perry Mason justice remain the same. Catch them weeknights at 10 here on WQES. We've been together for almost a year now, and I'm still amazed at what Ann gets our guests to admit to. Well, and there's no telling what Lynn might say, and you know what? That's what makes her so good. <laughs> but don't take our word for it. Find out for yourself with Pittsburgh's only primetime local talk show. Colin Devlin, Thursday nights at 8 on WQEX 16. Friday afternoon at 4, we bid a fond farewell to the residents of 165 Eaton Place. Oh, that's one way of putting it. Well, explain to me. Please explain. WQEX will air the last two episodes of the Emmy Award-winning series, Upstairs, Downstairs. That's good news. For the very last time. I don't call that good news. Are you very? Very. So don't miss the last two episodes of Upstairs, Downstairs, Friday afternoon at 4 on WQEX. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm Eleanor Shano. My guest tonight is Mim Seidel. She's a nutritionist. She's a dietitian. She's an expert. She knows everything there is to know about good nutrition. And Mim, we're going to go right to the phones first before we get to the cholesterol thing. Caller line five. Go ahead. You're on the air. Yes. Is there a substitute for dairy products on a vegetarian diet? Um, I think you're asking, is, is there another source of calcium? Because that's why we think, that's why we eat um, dairy products. Is that what you're thinking about? Yes. Uh, there are other sources of calcium. They include leafy greens like collard greens, kale, and broccoli, uh, almonds, uh, salmon with the bone in, um, you know, the canned salmon and canned sardines, and then possibly a calcium supplement might be the way you have to go. Okay, oh, thank you. Good question. Uh, a lot of people are very concerned about cholesterol. Just read uh, some research done recently that says that cholesterol levels cannot be too low, especially in men who have heart disease. Is that right? That's, that seems to be for heart disease. You know, sometimes it goes back and forth. But yes, in other countries, cholesterol levels are down to 130. Mm -hmm. And here, you, don't, you never see it. Um, and they seem perfectly fine having well, that. In, in countries like Japan, would that be maybe? Yes, yeah, they, usually the Asian countries right. that haven't had too many of our industry right. come over. Which is worse, saturated fat or cholesterol? For eating, saturated fat is worse because saturated fat raises your body's cholesterol twice two times that of what eating cholesterol does. We have become a nation obsessed, totally obsessed with fat. Every single product or every other product has no fat, reduced fat. I know um, m my husband is, is trying to watch really carefully, and he was so happy when that, that coffee cake, come, that Enderman, they came okay. out with the, the no fat coffee cake. Well, he just, just got right into that, and we looked at the calories. No fat does not mean no calories. That's exactly right. And people think, no, because they think fat is so bad, like you said, they're obsessed with fat. They think, oh, if it doesn't have fat, therefore it's good. Well, what do you think they put in the cake to make it taste good? It's full of sugar. Okay. So it's not as bad for your heart, except that people then eat the whole cake. They don't lose any weight. They remain obese. And the obesity is bad for your heart. 
Good case in point. Pulled this right out of the Wall Street Journal this morning. It says planters. I guess their business has been down a little bit because everybody thinks that nuts have, you know, too many, uh, too many fat grams. So planters are coming out with a new reduced fat, lower, uh, well, it's reduced fat, 45% less fat. But then, Mim, guess what? It says in order to improve the taste, they are adding more sugar, therefore more calories. So isn't that great? You can buy those little planters peanuts, and what they're doing is they're they're squishing the, the peanuts to take the oil out, the fat out, and then they're blowing them back up again and putting more sugar on them, and everybody's going to go out and say, wow, I can eat my peanuts now because they have 45% less fat. Right, and the, tr the truth is that they will have a little bit less calories because there's more calories in fat than there is in sugar. So they have reduced the fat, you're saying, and they have reduced the calories. My problem with this is that I see nothing wrong with eating peanuts or other foods that are high in fat if you do so in moderation. And what this does is feeds into the American way of, oh, now I can pig out. And that's just a real oh, bad... Sure. Sure. It's a bad mindset that we have. Well, the, I brought this right out of my, my kitchen. It's a little product that says, I, I can't believe it's not. It's a spray, a butter spray. I looked on the back, and I brought it in to show you. And then, what does it say? You tell them. Okay. It says nothing. It says it has a, yes. Eleanor said she couldn't believe that it, what it said. It has total fat, zero grams, saturated fat, zero, polyunsaturated fat, zero, and calories are zero. And you were wondering if that really could happen, given that the second ingredient is liquid soybean oil. And yes, this is true. They're, they're not lying because the law says, the regulations say, that if any of these things are less than half a gram or less than half a calorie, they can call it zero. So truthfully, there's a little bit in here, but it's less than half a gram. I, just, I, had to, I had to bring that in because I could not believe that, that every single thing, including calories, said zero, zero, zero. But Mimi says it's okay, and Mimi said that uh, as long as it tastes good, why not have it? Right. Okay, what advice do you uh, give to people who are really seriously trying to lose weight? Okay, first of all, throw all their diet books away and just decide that they're allowed to eat, but they should eat in moderation. They should eat breakfast, lunch, and supper. They should have a snack. They should keep it lower in fat, but they don't have to be crazy about it. They should eat a wide variety of foods, concentrating more on the breads and the cereals. Notice I didn't say bread with butter. Mm -hmm. I said breads and cereals and grains, fruits and vegetables, limiting the, the meats and the milks. They can have it, but mm -hmm. they should be the low fat, mm -hmm. lower fat, mm -hmm. the chicken without the skin. I mean, that is true. The skim milk or the 1% milk as opposed to the whole milk. Um, and watch all those other things, the alcohol, the cookies, the cakes, the candy, the ice cream, the all things the, that all we the eat good too stuff. much of. All the good stuff. Uh, phone lines are open, 683-1600. This is your big chance if you have any question. We'd also like to hear from you if you just have a comment about some of the things that you have found are working for you or against you in your diet. Uh, we are concerned that a lot of older people in Allegheny County are maybe not uh, receiving the nutrients that they should. If you live alone, perhaps it's very difficult uh, for you to motivate yourself to cook three meals a day. Is it important to eat three meals a day? How about grazing like the animals do? Grazing is fine. Uh, this three meals is, is overrated. Um, some people eat six small meals. That's the grazing that you're mm -hmm. talking about. But mm -hmm. having tea and toast at night and maybe tea and toast in the morning isn't going to do it. You're just not going to get your nutritional needs. Uh, some older people are drinking these, these um, nutritional supplement mm -hmm. drinks. Is that okay? The key word is supplement. I would like to assume that the doctor said, you know, your weight isn't real good. You're having a hard time putting the weight on. I'd like you to have a supplement. But the word supplement means it was supposed to go with their meals, right. not instead of their meals. And, and don't you think that if someone has really lost their appetite and lost their interest in food, that, that maybe they have to look for an underlying cause and really get to the doctor and say, why is it that I don't care about food? Maybe it is nothing more, or I, sh I was about to say nothing more serious, and that certainly is wrong because depression is serious, but uh, maybe, maybe they are suffering from uh, some illness or depression. It could be illness. It could be full-blown depression. It could be plain loneliness. It could be plain, I used to cook for six people, and now I only cook for myself. Mm -hmm. It could be the elderly man living alone who doesn't know how to cook or doesn't know how to shop. Mm -hmm. It could be somebody whose vision is failing or who physically is having a hard time getting to the supermarket. Right. There's a lot of reasons that people aren't getting what they need. It could be a fixed income.
to and not being able to afford what they need. Okay, we're going to take another break and uh, we're going to be back to take your phone call, 683-1600. My guest is Mim Seidel. She's a nutritionist. She's a dietitian. She has just a ton of great information. She'll be here to answer any of your questions and uh, we'd like to hear your comments too, so give us a call. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back. Lots of talk shows out there, but those topics. On Ricky, controlling women. On Sally, transsexuals. And on Donahue, photographer poses nude models in the streets. That same day, though, Charlie Rose talked with Washington insiders on the battle of the budget, educator Deborah Meyer on schools achieving their potential, and director Mira Nair and actress Marissa Tomei on the Perez family. No trash talk here, just fascinating guests with something to say. Finally, a real talk show alternative. Charlie Rose, weekday mornings at 9, here on WQEX. A touch of cooking, a pinch of dining, a dash of adventure. All the ingredients for incredible edibles as Chef Pierre Frenet leads a gastronomic tour of France. From acclaimed restaurants to favorite bistros, Pierre Frenet is cooking in France. Thursday afternoon at 1. Get set for gardening like you've never seen it, with a friendly atmosphere on Jane Nugent's Garden Party. I don't bite. <laughs> WTAE AM's Jane Nugent will give you tips on everything from planting trees to recipes for edible flowers. I think we should have it Oh, I love them. Very good. And fantastic craft ideas. Now, you can make paper out of any plant material. It's a show you'll grow to love. Jane Nugent's Garden Party, Thursday nights at 9 on WQEX 16. Welcome back. Gallon Urshino here with Mim Seidel and right to the phones. Caller line eight, you're on the air. Oh, we lost line eight. Okay, let's get another caller up there and uh, let's talk about uh, some foods that uh, I see these things in pa newspapers and magazines saying, this certain food will slow down the aging process. I wish I could say there is a food and, you know, we've been hiding it all, all along and we'll tell you what it is on this show. Um, we don't know of any one food. There's indications that if you have enough of the antioxidant vitamins, that's usually where they're coming from, the uh -huh. vitamin E, the, vi the beta carotene, the vitamin C, that helps with some processes. But no, I'm not going to be able to tell you a food that will <laughs> <Okay>. do that. <laughs> Caller, line five, you're on the air with Mim. Hi, thank you for taking my call. Yes. I uh, had a question about metabolism. Is there a way, I have a high metabolism, my sister has a low metabolism, and she's heavier and I'm thinner. Right. And I was wondering, is there something she can do to speed up her metabolism? She exercises, she walks, and she eats right, but it seems that maybe she should see a doctor, or is there something that she can do that maybe I'm doing that I don't know that I'm doing? <laughs> Uh, that, that's a very good question. And as you noticed, her metabolism seems to be slower than yours because you think you're probably eating about the same thing and you're thinner and she's heavier. She should see a doctor just to make sure her thyroid is okay. Other than that, you took the answer away from me. Exercise does increase your metabolism. It increases it while you're exercising and even for hours afterwards. But she should definitely just make sure the doctor's checked her out and make sure that her, her thyroid or anything else is okay. Otherwise, it's exercise. Maybe these two sisters, Mim, should keep one of those food diaries and write down every single thing they eat every day, everything that goes in your mouth, okay? It all begins with, you know, that hand to mouth. And, and they may be surprised. Maybe the heavier sister is consuming a little more food than That's she thinks. That's not a bad idea. Okay, caller line seven, you're on the air. Line seven. About, hello. Hi. I'm calling about triglycerides. Yep. The uh -huh. doctor said my triglycerides were high, like 350. Uh-huh. But I don't understand, like, what, what am I eating that's causing this, and what are fats, and Okay. Why, why am I worried about my triglycerides? You're worried about your triglycerides because that may indicate that you're at higher risk for heart disease or at risk for, uh, may indicate that, you, um, that you're going to be developing diabetes down the line or it may indicate nothing. It may indicate that 24, be hour, 24 hours before you had the test, you drank a lot of soda, okay? So triglycerides, one way to get them down is to lose weight if you need to lose weight. Um, if you drink alcohol, you need to decrease the alcohol. If you drink a lot of soda or something, and I don't mean diet soda, regular soda, something that's high in sugar, if you cut that down, 
usually your triglycerides will go down. Okay, we were talking earlier about maybe it not being advisable for everyone to eat three meals a day. Maybe they should graze, eat six meals a day. What about skipping those completely? As a means for weight control? Well, or just maybe because I didn't get around to it or I'm not hungry. A lot of people do not eat breakfast. No, they don't. And if they don't eat breakfast, let's say at a traditional time, 7 in the morning, but they have a snack that would be breakfast at mm. 10 o'clock, I have no problem with that. But if you're talking about skipping a meal, ending up with two meals a day, I find it very hard to believe that that person can get all the nutrients they need. They may get all the calories they need. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get all the nutrients you need. And also, when people are hungry, go for a long time and haven't eaten, they get, uh, sometimes they're very irritable, don't mm -hmm. think well, mm -hmm. and then when they do eat, they overeat. So it's really right. not a good idea. All right. Caller, line eight, you're on the air. Hello? Hi. I tuned in late, but I don't know if there's any discussion of hereditary factors in obesity. Uh, we, we didn't discuss it, and it's very true that there's a lot of indication that people are more, more prone to obesity uh, depending on family. But there's also this nature-nurture uh, question that's still being researched because in obese families, they're obese, but they also all eat the same way. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so it's you know, well, well, I raised two boys, mm -hmm. and basically the same diet. One of them died weighing 400 pounds. The other one never showed any signs of obesity. Mm. And we had the same kind of diet for a whole four people in the family. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, what Eleanor said earlier, that it begins with the hand to mouth, I don't think it begins there. I think it begins even before birth. And mm. the, the answer to that is what's troubled me for many years. But, you, you know, there's also a lot of psychological things that could come into right. play. There might have been some reasons that the, the son who was obese was eating more than he should for, for some reasons that have nothing to do with, with you or, or genetics, um, because that is odd to have a 400-pounder and a normal weight person. Caller line five. Go ahead. You're on the air. Uh, hello. Uh, I'm calling in regards to uh, they tell you to eat a lot of bulk and fiber. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, I mean, I get the fiber and the bulk, but then I can't uh, eliminate it. I, I seem to get constipated. Uh, have you any suggestions for that? One thing I would like to suggest, nobody seems to, to be very concrete about what type of fiber, what type of bulk. What works best as a laxative are the brand products, especially the wheat brand. So you should try things like the all brand and the cereals that say that their first ingredient is wheat bran and they have like 13 grams of fiber. Fruits and vegetables, though they're high in fiber, do not work as a laxative for everybody. So I would try one of those cereals. Try it slowly. Start slow, about a third or a half a cup a day, every day, and see if that works for you. Okay, another quick call. Caller line seven, you're on the air. Yes, um, I have uh, early emphysema, mm -hmm. and I take prednisone, and my cholesterol was really high there for a while. But my, uh, I went to the laboratory, and it was really high. So finally I went to the hospital, and it just dropped really far down. It was 386, and it dropped down to a 187, and that was in like within five months. And I'm trying to watch the, weight I'm, the, the food that I'm eating to put my weight down. But it seems after a certain point, my weight doesn't want to go down. You know, a lot of that is due to the prednisone. And because of prednisone, you retain fluid. And you should discuss with your physician what you might be able to do about that. Hey, Mimi, we're just about out of time. But uh, I want to make sure that I remind everybody about a very important event this, this Monday, Memorial Day. Uh, 200,000 families in Allegheny County cannot get enough food together to put a meal together. And we're going to have a big walk. Uh, hurry up, 15 seconds, tell them where it is. and. Okay, on Memorial Day, Monday, be there at 8.30 at the boardwalk um, down the Strip District, 15th and Smallman, and we will have a 10-mile walk to raise money uh, for anti-hunger programs, 100% of that money staying in Allegheny County. And it's really something that we all have to, to really address. 200,000 people without enough food, come down and join us. If you can't walk, come down and help, up or, or help out or just, just cheer us on, okay? Monday, the... Um walk to stamp out hunger in Allegheny County. I'm Eleanor Shana. We'll see you again next week, Wednesday night at 8 o'clock. Remember, the good years start right here. Good night, everybody. Floral arrangement for AgeWise Weekly, provided by Orr's Flower Shop of Shadyside.
WQEX thanks those who have made broadcast of this program possible, our members, and Keystone Health Plan West, offering Security Blue, a Blue Cross and Blue Shield Medicare HMO. And by Thrift Drug, celebrating 60 years of service with more than 125 locations. Thrift Drug, the one you can trust. And by St. Margaret Memorial Hospital, enriching the lives of seniors and their families. If you're older, you're in capable hands at St. Margaret. For more information, call 784-4144.